here with Roy LeBan, the founder and CTO of Pizzazz, which is a startup here in Seattle. Roy, thanks for joining us. Thanks. So what are you going to show us today? So I'm going to show you one of our uh, first puzzle ebooks uh, for the Amazon Kindle. Uh, and they're the first uh, uh, ebooks of any kind that allow you to interact directly to the page. So you're looking at the future of ebooks here. Okay, let's take a look. This is, this is uh, one of the first ebooks. It's uh, Sudoku Unbound number one. Uh, it's the first in a series of uh, books of Sudoku puzzles. Um, and as we go through the book, uh, you can see it says carefully crafted puzzles, and we're going to see in a bit that these are not random puzzles. They're specially uh, uh, crafted puzzles that are designed to be great to solve. And on the Kindle itself. And on the Kindle itself, yeah. which we'll see in just a moment. And because this is an active book, uh, we have a few options here, and you can actually change the difficulty of the puzzles dynamically uh, from easy to medium or hard. Uh, initially, the book comes with 100 easy puzzles, but if you want harder puzzles, you can switch to medium or hard. So this is not a game, it's a digital version of the kind of book that I might pick up at a, a bookstore with puzzles in it. Exactly. So let's go to the first puzzle in the book. And uh, I'll point out a couple things. You know, it just looks exactly like you'd see in, in a paper book, uh, except there's a little bit of uh, help information at the bottom to help you uh, know how the keyboard's laid out. Uh, and there's a cursor. Um, but I want to point out something about the puzzle, and that is, uh, notice that the puzzle itself is an interesting shape. There's this you know, big oval diagonal through the middle. Uh, and these puzzles um, are, like I said, carefully crafted. They're designed to be fun to solve, to be challenging, um, and not to be just a random assortment of, of numbers throughout the grid. Uh, and that's the difference between a product like what we're doing. Um, and honestly, there's plenty of good books out there. But uh, if you look at a random Sudoku game as opposed to a book, it's just got random puzzles, and they're not very interesting, and they're not fun to solve. And so, uh, as people who love puzzles, we've made sure that what's in here is great to solve. So to solve it, we're going to move around. We can move the cursor um, in position somewhere. Uh, and I'm just going to cheat, because uh, I haven't solved this particular puzzle before, and I'm going to just ask for a hint, and it's going to fill in a number. And so uh, a 9 goes in that cell. Um, and I could keep cheating and fill in the whole puzzle that way. Um, but maybe in this particular cell, let's suppose I, I think this might be a, um, a 2 or a 3, let's say. So I can go and I can press the numbers for 2 and 3, and I get what are called notes in that cell. Uh, and so I can come back to this later um, and change that. Uh, maybe I figure out, oh, actually, I forgot it really could be a 4 as well, so let me put a 4 in there. Um, and then as I'm filling out the puzzle, um, more and more of it's going to uh, fill in goes very quickly when, you, when you're uh, cheating. And when you've actually written the book. When you've actually written the <laughs> book, exactly. So let me fill in something that I know is wrong. Uh, so I know that can't be a five because there's another five in that box. Uh, so at this point, maybe I'm stuck. I'm not sure what's going on. And let me ask for a hint. And you can see that that five went away. Um, so that was the hint that, nope, that was incorrect. Uh, let me go to another cell that I know is correct because I actually know that this is an eight at this point. And so I'm going to press and ask for a hint again and it just flashes it off and back on to indicate that yes, that eight is correct. So these are a couple things that you can do um, that are uh, different than, uh, than what you can do in a, um, uh, a paper book. Uh, let me point out one other thing. I'm just gonna add a couple more eights in here. Um, and if you look in the uh, lower corner here, um, where the keypad is shown, uh, you're gonna see that the eight turned to white. Right. And that means you've used up all of the eights. Uh, and uh, you have nine or more eights in the grid, uh, and that means that uh, you can't have any eights anywhere else. Except, in, in this case, these are all wrong. So, of course, I'm, I'm kind of confused here, and I just like to get rid of all my mistakes. And I've got a couple of choices. Remove one mistake or remove all mistake. Let me go ahead and choose that one. And it wiped out all these numbers that were not correct. Now, this is really interesting, and you made a point earlier that uh, some of this is different than what you would get in a paper book. But as you're doing this, I'm realizing a lot of it is actually better than what you'd get in a paper book, which is not necessarily true of all e-books. Um, That's exactly the case. Yeah, so what, are you, what have you struck on here? I mean, is Well, you know, one of, one of the things that our company specializes in is building great experiences. And so we spend a tremendous amount of time looking at what the right experience was. So we're not trying to make this like paper. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take the experience of solving on paper and 
take that experience and replicate that. So the experience of solving on paper, you have the ability to take notes. You have the ability to you know, erase. You have the ability to jump around. Uh, and the way in which you're thinking when you're solving on paper, that's the sort of thing that we want to replicate. And as much as possible, we want the interface to simply go away. We don't want it to be in your way. And we've done a number of subtle things to make that the case. Uh, as you notice, the, uh, the, the numbers that are the givens are outline numbers, and the numbers that you are um, filling in are sort of a handwriting number. That's not accidental. We spent a lot of time figuring out what the right way to display these was uh, so that we could uh, give you the right feel to the puzzle. Um, and you know, the numeric keypad, that's another thing. Um, you know, the normal way would be just be using the top row, but we wanted to make it feel as natural as possible. So you're not looking back and forth from the keyboard to the grid, from the keyboard to the grid. You don't do that when you're solving on paper. You're just filling stuff in. Great. Well, Roy, thanks very much for taking the time to show us. You're welcome.